Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be doing the May fire alarm system test. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we have some Honeywell Hornstrom's up. These are rebranded Wheelock notification appliances, uh, specifically uh, MT-LSM horn strobes. But what this is, is a multi-tone horn strobe with a vertical strobe on it. The strobes on these are 1575 Candela, which means that if you look at it straight on, you'll see 75 Candela. And then from the sides, it's 15 Candela. You can see that this is mounted on its uh, appropriate back box. It's mounted on a Wheelock back box, and I think it looks pretty nice. Um, it's the way it was designed. Down here, I have a Honeywell pull station. Not exactly sure what the model number this is. I'm pretty sure it's like a S464A. Um, this was an addressable pull station that was converted to conventional. Um, it's slightly newer, so you can tell by this font here, which is a little smaller and a little more modern looking. I think this was from the 90s. Uh, but either way, pretty common setup to see uh, this with a Honeywell rebranded signal, specifically at BWI Airport, which is the Thurgood Marshall Airport and uh, in Baltimore. They have this exact setup. Um, the pole stations do have some sort of cover on them, but same looking thing. And then this is um, a back box. I actually think... Uh, pfft, can't talk today. I actually think this looks nice on this back box. It's not the back box it was designed to be on. This is actually a BG10 back box. Uh, I had to mess with the screw orientation a little bit to get this to actually look okay, but for the most part, I actually really like how it looks. It doesn't stick out from the wall very far. Over here in the utility room, you can see we have the fire panel, normal condition. This is a older style Honeywell pull station, so you can see compared to the um, other font, this has larger font, and I think it just looks a little more retro. Um, again, same pull station, though. This is a S464A or something like that. This is actually a conventional pull station, and this one's from the 80s. I know that because it has a date code inside. Um, pretty neat pull station. Up here, I have another one of these MTs. So this is a another multi-tone horn strobe. Again, also Honeywell rebranded just to keep things consistent. So you can see on either side of the wall, we have this. Going into the fire museum room, we have another Wheelock MT rebrand. So this is a Honeywell rebranded uh, MT. Exact same unit as that one, except this one has a ceiling mount strobe. So you can see the reflector is a little bit different because it's supposed to direct light in all directions, but either way, it's the same thing. I mean, if you look at it from here, it looks the same as a wall mount unit. And then I have this smoke detector, which is an ionization Honeywell style smoke detector. Going into the bathroom, just to keep things very consistent, I have this Honeywell remote strobe. It's uh, set at 75 Candela because it's fixed, uh, but you can see this is just a remote strobe, an LSM style strobe. Very consistent with the theme here. This is something you'd realistically see on a system um, from the 90s like this forest over here nothing's changed although this smoke detector also kind of does match the theme going to the far side of the basement you can see we have another one of these honeywell pole stations uh, this one is the same one as the one over there um, as you can see up here i have an i3 nice and standard Finally, at the end of the basement, I have yet another Honeywell horn strobe. You can see this one is also mounted on its own back box. I think this one looks pretty sharp. I like the way these look on their back boxes. Out here in the garage, I have another one of these multi-tone horn strobes. You can see Honeywell rebranded, of course. Also, this is a good time to point out that all of these units are on the horn tone. Unfortunately, since these things are individually controlled, um, basically what you have to do when you install them is set the tone and volume. Um, so you kind of just have to pick one. I set each unit individually at low volume horn continuous. So that way I can code um, the horn circuit and pulse them at whatever tone I want. Uh, but unfortunately they are only gonna be on horn. And then down here I have a Firelight BG-10. Again, this is sort of a realistic system you'd see. I do see a lot of BG-10s with uh, Wheelock MTs. I think this is probably the most common setup I would see with this style of MTs with the vertical strobe because they're both from the 90s and they're both, you know, commonly installed on older Honeywell and conventional systems. So I'm about to set off the system, but this is actually one of the very few systems where I'll actually put on some hearing protection. Currently, the system will just play all of these units at continuous because I feel like that's the most common configuration. But these things are wicked loud. Um, the previous system was a voice of act system. So going from that to these shrieking horns was pretty hard. Without further ado, here we go. Three, two, one, pull down. We have 
No strobe sync whatsoever. So to reset this pull station, you don't necessarily need a special tool, but you don't have a key either. Um, I'm honestly not sure how I feel about this, but you're supposed to use a flathead screwdriver that's very thin like this, or maybe there's a tool, but you just kind of stick it in and then it opens. You can see how it works. There's this little spring-loaded tab that um, latches into this thing right here, and uh, by pulling it, you release it. But you flip the switch. You can see the newer versions have this little... Um, plastic switch which i kind of like and then it flips down when you pull it um you can see how i ha had to kind of rig it up to the back box because the actual holes you're supposed to mount it are here and here but uh, obviously that wouldn't have worked because this unit would have been sunk down so i used washers to mount it like this and it looks legit which is good so push that shut reset the system uh, i low-key got to get this part done pretty quickly because it's dark outside and uh, it's probably not safe to be outside at this point in Massachusetts, but that's fine. I'll sacrifice that for the, the video content. Also, it's probably not a good idea to set these things off this late at night, but uh, yeah, this is a dumb idea. All right. See the strobe light flashing in the shed. All right, good thing we got that turned off. All right, I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of tired of the uh, continuous, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the coding to, let's see, March time. Yeah, let's do code three first. So we'll change both NACs to do code three and then we'll go ahead and set the system off put the door back on the magnet all right let's go ahead and pull this station three two one pull down Normally I don't give epilepsy warnings because I think they're unnecessary, but in this case I will give you an epilepsy warning. Um, if you have epilepsy or any sensitivity to strobes that are unsynced, do not watch this part. I'm about to show you what it looks like when the lights are off and these things are flashing. You can see that obviously these are not syncable, but also they flash really, really fast, probably at double the rate of a normal strobe light. You can hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lights and you're going to see what it looks like. Yeah. And now you can kind of see why synchronization requirements are in place. Because when you have this many strobes in a field of view, it's very easy for someone to get a seizure because I believe the number is like five or so strobes in a consecutive second um, for someone to have a seizure. But like, look at that. It's crazy. It looks like it's okay on camera, but in reality, this is like super disorienting. Even for me, I have no epilepsy and this would give me a headache really fast. Just listen to the sound of these. Yeah, it is definitely something. Anyways, I'm gonna reset this pull station. So this is an older type, 
which I'll show you the inside of. So if you pop this unit open, it pops open the same way. You can see that these have a toggle switch instead of a uh, like one of those little plastic ones. So that's interesting for sure. Not sure which one I like better. Well, I kind of like the, uh, the other style because I feel like it's a little more reliable. <laughs> reliable. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and reset the system. I've gone ahead and set the system to play March time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and activate this pole station by the door. You might be wondering, how did it get light outside? Because literally like a minute ago, I was outside and it was getting dark. Well, actually the last of my film was like a week ago. Now it's Saturday again. Um, I usually wait until no one's home to film these tests. Um, and right now it just happens that no one's home. So I chose this opportunity to go ahead and film. But anyways, pull down. Since it's such a nice day, let's go outside. I'll walk outside to the garage and then we can uh, show off the horn strobe there. The strobe is actually flashing in March time. You can't see it though. Both of these horn strobes are wired in, uh, or both the horn and the strobe are wired together, so the strobe is also being coded. Did just clean the windows, so pop this open at the top. This one has a switch with a little uh, red marker at the top to tell you when it's activated, which is pretty neat. You can kind of see the wiring back there. I used Wagos, of course, because that is the preferred method. Pop that shut. I'm gonna go ahead and magnet test this unit. I have no idea where the uh, testing area is. So I'm just going to hold it somewhere and hope that that's correct. That's probably not correct because it's not gone off yet, but maybe there. Okay, there it is. So I set the system to play an interesting configuration. One of the NACs is going to play code three while the other is going to do march time. So it'll be a combination. Definitely not up to code, I don't think, to do this. But uh, I guess I've seen it a couple times. So I've set the system to play a pretty interesting tone. Now it's gonna be on two stage. So what that means is when the alarm is first activated, it's gonna play a slow code um, or a slow march time. So it's gonna be like beep, beep. So the objective of that is 
when the alarm sounds at first, it's just a pre-alarm type thing and you check it out. After like three minutes of no uh, acknowledgement, then the alarm will go into code three. So right now it is 210, so I'm gonna wait until it says 211. I'm gonna pull it and then the alarm should go into full alarm at 214. Like I said, after about three minutes, it's gonna go into code three. That would indicate that there's a real, like full alarm in the building and that everyone actually needs to evacuate now. Something like this would be present in like maybe a slightly larger building back in the day where they wanted to check out an alarm before they actually evacuate. So when the alarm is activated, they have someone check it out. Um, and then if it's just a false alarm, they just acknowledge it and silence it. Um, if not, it goes into full alarm and then the alarm just completely goes off. So that's an example of pre-alarm type thing or two stage. Um, in this case, after the alarm goes into the second stage, like I said, that's what indicates the presence of a real emergency. So I'm gonna go in the garage, reset the pole station. Quickly activate this detector. Let's also do the carbon monoxide alarm while we're in this room see if I can push this in. I actually went ahead and redid the overhead wiring, as you can see. I think I mentioned this last video too, but. Warning, carbon monoxide. Please evacuate the building. Oh yeah, silence button doesn't work for this. Just gotta reset. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do a functional test. So I have the fog machine in a cardboard box to simulate an emergency or something. Um, maybe let's say something hot fell into these cans and then there's a fire, so get that started. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. There you go. You can see the dense smoke here. Wow, look at that. You can see how even during the day, you know, sometimes smoke can really obstruct visibility, which is kind of interesting because a lot of people, uh, I see comment on emergency lighting videos and they're like, what's the point of an emergency light when it's daytime? Well, you can kind of see here that just with this little thin fog, um, it's definitely a lot darker. It's not really, you know, gonna be shown on camera because the camera will try to light things with well, but. You'd imagine that if this was like thick smoke, it would be really hard to see. So yeah, that's that. Well, thank you for watching this video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.